Pastor Joe here. It's Tuesday, a time for our e blast. It's December uh, the 1st, 2020, which has been a crazy year. I'm glad we're getting to the end of it. Let's get quickly to the next year. But uh, glad that you're joining me today. Just a couple of things. Let me give you an update for Sunday. Sunday was awesome. Crowds have been down a little bit because of this second wave of COVID, more so at our Magnolia campus. We're down about 40, 40, 245% attendance, probably 50% maybe at best. And then at our spring campus, probably overall down about 45% still. So uh, we got some ways to go to get everybody back to church and celebrating. But the services were still phenomenal. It's amazing what happens in the, in the midst of God's people. A lot of people don't realize that spiritual dynamic of, of corporate worship. And when the body of Christ gets together, the energy, the presence of God, the spirit of God working uh, the worship together, the praying together, the learning together, studying scripture together. That dynamic cannot be replaced by online. As much as I appreciate the capacity to be able to bring people online services and thank God for the technology to do that, that just still just comes up a little short. So I would say to you, those of you who can be back in church, don't fall into this bad habit of saying it's a lot easier to stay home. You're missing so much. So don't don't be robbed. If you're if you're out visiting the restaurants and grocery shopping and Walmart and all that stuff, then I tell you, church is a whole lot safer environment to be in than any of those places. So still going through all the distancing at the church and wearing, encouraging people wear a mask. We don't mandate, but encourage people wear a mask as they come in and as they exit and even as they fellowship and to stay even six feet apart. And hey, it hadn't hindered us loving on each other and praying for each other and believing God together. So uh, we've had people joining the church. We're having visitors that are still coming during this time. Uh, we've been baptizing people. You know, had half a dozen people we baptized in over the, during this COVID period of time. Several, uh, I mean, probably more than that now Look, thinking about it. So God's moving. Uh, come be a part of what God's doing, if at all possible. I understand there's some who still can't and uh, not going to put any pressure on you to do that. You know, I was reading today, I have a devotional book that I read from often, and I've, through the years I've gone through it multiple times. It's, this book's getting a little worn out. I don't know if you can see how just rump, rump, ruffled it is and how many bookmarks that I have in it. I'd encourage anybody, if they can find this book online anymore, Awake My Heart by J. Sidlow Baxter. It's a daily devotional, and he's one of the great teachers, theologians of the Word of God. He's long been passed and gone on to be with Jesus, but uh, there's over a million copies of this particular book been sold, and many more to, to be deals to be sold so it's a great book for devotion because it's deep and it's uh, it's not just kind of uh, surface you know uh, emotional kind of stuff it's bible and he just lays it out there in a way that only he can do it but he he talks about he calls today's that devotion i won't read it i'm just going to give you a paragraph here but he says here it says uh the text of text and the text of text is john three sixteen. we're all familiar with it he said, we have reached December. Christmas draws near again with all its tender associations and mighty meaning over against the saddening spectacle of our war-scarred, sin-strangled 20th century world. We're in the 21st now. Anyway, let us reflect again with simple-hearted gratitude on the wonder of all wonders in the text of text, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He says, the measure of love is always the willingness to give its capacity for sacrifice. If we would measure the love of God, we must measure it by the cross, Calvary. Someone thus has written, and he gives this little anonymous poem, he says, love ever gives, forgives, outlives, and ever stands with open hands, and while it lives, it gives, and while it gives, it lives. And this is love's prerogative, to give and give and give. Well, that is certainly true of the love of God. Be a good Christmas gift if you're thinking about gifts, by the way, for folks. It is certainly true about the love of God. I love that little word it puts in there, for God so loved. I mean, how can you measure the love of God? That's I mean, so fabulously, so enormously, so carefully, so genuinely, so uniquely loved. I mean, that's what else can you put there? They're, they're so undescribable about the amount of love that God shared for us. And you can't separate Christmas, this time we're celebrating, from the sacrifice of God's love, his son. The, the crown, and the, I mean the cross and the cradle, leading ultimately to the crown, but you can't separate those two. That's the love of God. And if you haven't experienced the love of God on that level, you need to give your life and your heart to Jesus Christ because love ever forgives. God's ready to forgive you of everything, every sin you've ever done. Open your heart to him if you've never done that. You know, the, 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 the price of love, it, if we're really going to be people who love, is that we always give, willing to sacrifice. By the way, you know, we don't say a lot about finances at Believer's Fellowship. We don't take a, we don't, uh, 
do a lot of promotions and giving promotions and things like that. In fact, we don't even pass a plate at our church. If you're familiar with us, you know that. If you ever visited us, if you're not a member of our church, you'd come in and you see receptacles at the exit doors of the worship center. We ask people as they come, as they go to exercise their, their giving as worship by placing their gifts in those receptacles. Once a year, though, every year, we promote our Christmas offering. And uh, we talk about the ministry that we do with this offering over and above the other ministries that our church does through our general budget. In our general budget, we have a, a designated amount that we're giving and it's in the thousands of thousands of dollars to international missions, to local missions, to state missions, to church planning, to Christmas, uh, to Christian schools and seminaries. All that's within that particular portion of a designated giving we do every, every, every year. But we also have this open free will offering. We encourage people to participate that goes outside the measure of that designated budget offering for missions. And this goes into missions that we ourselves, our pastors, our staff, our volunteers, the counselors that go with us, young people, mission trips, all that goes into promoting that and doing that. That involves conferences. Listen, we have led thousands of people to Jesus Christ over the years through this through this particular ministry that we do at Christmas of taking this offering because we send mission teams and ministry teams that, that are supported by that. We have ministered to literally thousands of pastors in multiple countries through conferences that this offering supports. We've helped start churches. We've helped uh, participate in building churches. We have helped, uh, uh, be, we've started planted home churches in some communist countries through for these offerings. We support pastors. So there's a lot that we do over and above our regular budget offering. And we take this offering up every Christmas. Today is Giving Tuesday. And the world is uh, promoting that. But uh, you ought to be giving Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the believer. But I do want to take this occasion on Giving Tuesday to encourage you to give to our Christmas mission offering. Because all of it goes into reaching people. All of it goes into training disciples. All of it goes into encouraging churches and pastors overseas. And it's a ministry that has been so helpful to so many people over so many years. that, that we, We've been doing this 30 plus years. We take this offering. And for 30 plus years now, we've been doing ministry training, discipling, evangelism by means of this offering that comes in each year. So I want to encourage you to be a part of it, to pray about what the Lord might have you do, to send that offering in. You can go to bfchurch.com, our website, select the give button. And uh, it just if you have a gift for the Christmas offering you want to give, you can give it there. You can do your regular tithes and offerings there. But just do it. And if there's a place for the memo there when you when you go to giving it, just say Christmas offering. And, and we understand what that means. And it'll go directly to that and be used for the purpose of, that I've just mentioned to you. But take the opportunity. It's life-changing. It'll touch and change your life in multiple, multiple ways. So as little as I do say about giving, that's one of the most important things that we do in talking about our giving all year long. Giving regularly has uh, held up to some degree with, with attendance going down. Obviously, giving goes down about 15, 20% over the year. Uh, we're not doing some of the things we would normally do anyway, so we're kind of meeting ends, but we definitely need our people who are members of this church to be faithful with their tithes and their offerings each and every week. You can drop it by, you can drive by and bring it in the offense, you can put it in the mail, you can go online, you can give by through our through the, the account that's on bfchurch.com. But just be faithful, especially at this time of year, to get your gifts in and honor the Lord. He has blessed us in so many ways. For God so loved, he gave. Because we love, we give. Because we love, we care. Because we love, well, we put it simply with our church byline or logo. It's really our whole plan of attack for our church, why we exist. And it's those three simple statements. Love God. Love people. Reach the world. That's our heart's desire. Pray that you'll participate in that with us. And hope to see you here Sunday. If not, get online as we're talking about Christmas. The fact, fiction, and fake news. Separating tradition and folklore from biblical facts and getting down to the truth of what the Bible says about Christmas and all that goes on at Christmas because there's a lot of basic junk that's been thrown in. So if you want to get a, get a be a very interesting and eye-opening series of messages, I encourage you to come and listen to that or get it online. I love you. The church loves you. Jesus loves you. For God so loves you, he gave his only begotten son. Merry Christmas. Let's have a great season. Let's trust the Lord together as we go forward. Amen.